Before I begin talking through the question, I want to tell you something, I want to show you something on this diagram before I've even started to solve the question. I've done something somewhat unusual on the diagram which I've learned over time as a strategy to help me um, see through questions like this. As I mentioned before, part of the problem is so many lines. So many lines everywhere, okay? So I want to try to distinguish between some of them and that's what I use color for. Now you notice there are only two lines, I could have done more, but there are only two lines on this diagram that are different to the others, okay? They are AR and AS, okay? The reason I've colored them differently is because these two lines share a property, they're a particular kind of line that none of the other lines share. Now I've cheated a little bit, it's not really cheating, but um, I've cheated a little bit in that I haven't just looked at the diagram, I've actually read the entire question. You know how you have reading time? You have reading time? Um, there's lots of different ways to use reading time, but one of the ways to use it is to read through the whole question and see that, can you notice, for instance, something like say part three, part three, actually provides you extra information that the original question, or just the setup for the question, doesn't tell you. It tells you stuff about AR and AS. Do you notice that? Look at part three. AR and AS are not just any lines, they are tangents, right? That's probably gonna be important. I mean, they say, if they are tangents, prove yada, yada, yada. So clearly I'm gonna have to refer to that. So I wanna refer to these lines as different to the, all the others, okay? So, with that in mind, let's begin. So can you use that, can you use that for part one? Ah, good question. Uh, can I use that for part one? Um, I can't, which is one of the reasons why they put it into part three. So part one can be used for part two, it can be used for part three, but you can't reverse it. Um, I just want to keep that in mind for the future because I'm going to use the one diagram for all three questions. Okay, prove that PR is parallel to QS. So where are PR and QS? Here and here, okay? Now PR and QS, you might notice, are on different, are in different circles. So I'm going to need to relate them in some way that's in common, okay? So therefore, the most obvious thing that leaps to my mind is to think, well, there's only one feature that's actually common between the circles. It's a chord, but it's a bit sneaky because they haven't drawn it in. Can you see what the common chord is? What's its name? AB. AB. Do you see that AB is a chord in the left circle and it's a chord in the right circle? Okay, so being that I've got features from different circles, I'm going to have to connect them in some way. This is a good construction to include. So with another color, I'm going to construct AB. There we go. Okay. Now having done that, I now want to think, what are the ways that I can prove that lines are parallel? There are generally three properties that we use, that we talk about on parallel lines. If lines are parallel, then we know this. Well, we can use them in reverse. What are the three kinds of features we look for on parallel lines? We look for co-interior angles. What else do we look for? Alternate. Alternate angles. And what else do we look for? Corresponding. Okay, now have a look. I'm hopefully going to prove that QS is parallel to PR. Do you see any corresponding angles here? What would be a corresponding angle if I had one? Like uh, corresponding angles, they form like an F. Right? So if I had, say, this angle, what would it correspond to? And the answer is it would correspond to an angle out here. Do you agree? I, I need to extend this line. I don't have it yet. I could, but I don't. Um, alternate angles. Where might an alternate angle be on these two? Like, for example, see this angle down here now. What angle would this be alternate to on these two parallel lines? If you have a look at this guy here, you need a Z, don't you? That's what alternate angles look like. So you'd have to have a Z going here, and then it'd have to go that way. Do you see that? So there'd be an angle on the outside, and it would be alternate to this angle. Now, I don't have either of those angles, so I'm just going to go for the third one, which are co-interior. What's the relationship between co-interior angles? They're supplementary, they add up to 180 degrees. Now, think, in circles, there are some angles you know about that add up to 180 degrees. Can you give me an example? In, in cyclic quadrilaterals, opposite angles, like say, oh, I don't know, uh, these guys here, right? You see their opposite angles in this cyclic quad over here? Or these two here, they are gonna be supplementary. So let's give this thing a name. Let's call this guy theta over here. The angle that it's supplementary to, R, P, A, Royal Prince Alfred. Uh, what's it supplementary to? What's the name of the angle that's opposite? 
Yeah, ABR or RBA. Yeah, they're both fine. Reserve Bank Australia. Um, <laughs> there's lots of great acronyms in here. So I'm going to label that accordingly. This guy over here is 180 degrees minus theta. I will point out, you don't have to call it theta, of course, in your proof, um, but it just makes it a bit easier to talk about. So I've got this guy over here. It's 180 minus theta, okay? Now, if that is theta, and these lines really are parallel, then what should this guy be equal to? Th these are the co-interior angles that I was talking about. This should be 180 degrees minus theta. So I've got a 180 degrees minus theta here. How are these guys related? This guy is the opposite interior angle to this exterior angle. Does that make sense? So if I say the exterior angle of cyclic quad a, B, S, Q, I have no idea what that's an acronym for, is equal to the opposite interior angle, then bam, I've got the 180 minus theta that I was after. Is that okay? So my, my final line would be, uh, PR is parallel to QS because co-interior angles are supplementary. Is that okay? So I'm not gonna labor the writing with that because I think that that's, those steps are clear. Um, opposite angles of a cyclic chord, exterior angle of a cyclic chord, and you're there, okay? Part two. Part two says, <clears throat> if AP equals BX, AP equals BX, where are those guys? Here's AP, here's BX, okay? Prove that AB, which I've, we've constructed just now, is equal to XP, which I haven't constructed yet, okay? Let's put these guys on. Now remember, I don't know that these are equal yet, so I'm not going to put the, the lines on them, but I am going to use color to help me identify how these features are related. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just calling. Okay, so what did we just say? Uh, X, XP, so that guy, guy goes around here. There it is, and what was the side I'm supposed to compare it to? AB, which is the one we put in black. I'm just going to put a red line over the top. Okay, so how can I connect these two together? Well, I want you to look at them. Do you notice they, they overlap? And they're both in this circle. Do you see both of the, those chords are in this circle over here? So I'm just going to concentrate on this circle for a little bit, okay? Can you see there are clearly some angles that relate these two sides to each other? For instance, APB. APB, this angle here. If I call it something like, say, alpha. Do you notice over in this circle, that angle is standing at the circumference and it's on an arc. What arc is it on? What arc is angle PAB standing on? AX. So that arc over here, the angle that's, there is an angle standing on this, but actually it's going to be this guy, is it not? You see that? AX. Standing, this is the angle standing on, think, picture the legs, okay, of a person, they're standing on that arc. In fact, the angle I've marked as alpha, I think it's standing on arc PRB, this guy here, this long, this big arc over here, and that's the angle that's formed. Do you see that? Okay. So I want you to come back to this big arc. That's not the only angle that's standing on this arc. Have a look. Is there another angle you can see? PXB. That angle's also standing on that arc, and angles on the, standing on the same arc are equal, okay? That's good, that's a good indicator. If I've got these two angles being equal, hmm, I've also been told that these two sides are equal. I've got equal angles, I've got equal sides. What kind of triangles can you see that would put all that information together? I think I have congruent triangles, right? We've got lots of similar triangles in, in circles. We've got lots of congruent triangles. The, the clue that tells me it's congruent is that I've actually got equal lengths, okay? Um, I need something else though. All I've got is a pair of sides and a pair of angles that aren't even in the triangles that I need. See, see these red lines? Al alpha is not in that triangle, so I need something else. What can I use? Hmm. Mm. Declan, what do you say? Um, AX, is AX is common. Aha! So, if AX is common, I'm just going to 
put a wiggle on it, okay? I've got that guy, I've got this side here, two sides, two sides. I need an included angle, don't I? I need an included angle. But look carefully, the included angle here isn't just alpha, it's alpha and a little bit. What's the included angle in the other triangle? It's gonna be this guy, right? Do you see the triangles I'm looking at? Let me name them because we're starting to get a bit more information, right? So the triangles I'm looking at are A, P, X, A, P, X, and triangle, what's the other one? A, X, B, very good. Okay, so remember how I said, ooh, alpha and a little bit. <laughs> alpha and a little bit. So I'm expecting that those little bits are the same, but how can I show that? What information would I use? Oh, really? Oh. Okay, I'm almost there. You'd have to prove that so let me show you, let me show you. I'm gonna call this guy beta in here. Beta, okay. Do you notice it's standing on, or it's subtended by this chord over here? Do you agree with that? See that? Can you see it coming up into there? Okay, that's beta. And this is the other little bit, which I'm expecting is also beta. It's standing on another chord. What chord is this guy subtended by? A, a, P, which, but they're equal. They're equal, right? And chords subtended the circumference by equal chords are also equal, okay? So I've got side, angle, side. There's your congruence proof. And these two red lengths, they correspond to each other in those congruent triangles, okay?